Hello and welcome back. In this video I'm going to cover how to copy components within a library file and why that's a good idea. We're going to take a look at what in condition priority conflicts are and how to resolve those. And finally we're going to delete and replace some components within a template to account for project changes. Not that those ever happen. We're going to pick up right where we left off in our two-lane urban template that we created in our project template library. Since we created this template, we've had a change in our project standards or outlook. So what we want to do is change the end condition for this entire template. Now the nice thing about that is you don't have to start from scratch. We can make the changes as we go along. So to do that, I'm going to open up the end conditions folder. I'm going to go down to the cut and fill and look at our template here. So this is the template that we used, and I want to make some changes to this. So instead of editing the end condition component here in the standards library area, I want to copy it down to our project template area. So simply right click on it, click copy, and come down to your project templates, right click again, and click paste. You can also use the hotkeys. I do this because we're going to make some changes to this standard component and I want to leave the standard component the way it is and indicate that I've used that template but changed it in my project. So every change that you make should be represented down here in this project template folder. So the first thing I want to do is highlight that and rename it since it's not this going to be the standard anymore and what we're going to do is we're going to add a ditch to it. So we're going to say cut and fill four slopes with a ditch. Now, it's very important here. You can see that I just have it highlighted with the gray mark. That means it's down here in the preview. But actually, the template that's being represented here in our active editing area is the cut and fill, the original. And I don't want that. So come down here and double click on it to make it active. And now you can see that the active at work area is with the ditch. Now for us to make our project changes, what we need to do is get rid of this fill 2 to 1 slope. So I'm going to simply right click on that and say delete that component. Then I'm going to replace that with a ditch that we copied from the standard template into this project library. So I'm going to select it once so that it shows up down here in my preview box. I'm simply going to drag and drop it into my template. quick fit, and you can see now that that 2 to 1 slope has been replaced by a ditch. Anytime you make changes to an in condition component, you need to test it. So let's go do that. And there you see we have a problem. A dialog has popped up and said that we have an in condition priority conflict. So we're going to click OK here, and in our test window, we're going to come up here and check the priorities and you'll see that the problem here is with the hinge point and it's been highlighted so I'm going to edit that point or all the end conditions from that point and now you can see the problem as we scroll through this list and highlight each one it will show us the end condition that that represents so you can check it's going to go from the lowest number to the highest in order and check to see if it solves so if the first one does not hit its target then it will drop down and try the second one. If the second one doesn't find its target, it'll draw the third and fourth and so on until it finds a solution. Once it solves, it stops checking. So you want to order these how you would want them to solve in order. Our problem is, is that this ditch has the same priority as our 4 to 1 slope. So since we want the ditch to be the last solve or the, replace the 2 to 1 slope here and you can see between 5 and 9 is the cut and fill. Let's go ahead and change this 3 here for the ditch to a 7. Once we've done that we can go ahead and click OK and now you see that that warning has been solved. So now we can close this dialog and we can go ahead and draw our terrain. Again remember to change this somewhere between 3 and 5 and I'm going to go ahead and draw and all the cut looks good and when we get down to the fill 
it steps through the three, four slopes, and then we finally end up with our ditch solution. So that all looks good. Anytime you've got a component that's working the way you want, go ahead and save it. Remember that your work is not automatically saved, so it doesn't hurt anything to save often. Now what we want to do is incorporate this end condition into our template. So let's go back to our two-lane urban and double click. Now we want to get rid of all the end conditions here. Well what's a quick way to do that without clicking on right clicking on each one and selecting them to delete? If I right click out here in space I get a delete components menu choice. So I'm going to select that and then what I'm going to do is click the left mouse button and draw a line. And you see as long as I hold the left mouse button down it continues to draw that line. Now my goal here is to touch everything that I want to delete. So you can see anything that that line has crossed now when I release the mouse button is going to disappear. And I'm going to do that right now. And there you go. So now you can see that all the end conditions have been removed from our template. So I'm going to come back to our special end condition here and I'm going to drag and drop that over and you can see what I need to do. I need to turn on the mirror and I should have probably clicked on dynamic settings as well because I want to apply the fixes. There you go. Now I'm going to come in and zoom in a little bit to where I make sure that those points merge. Again, notice the color change. Data point to accept it. And I'm going to do a final fit. I'm going to turn the point names back on to make sure our affixes got applied, and they did. And that looks great. So now we've modified our existing template to take into account these new project standards. So again, a quick save after you've got a working template. And to sum up, before you modify any of these standard components, make sure that you make a copy of those and place them within the project specific folder. And finally, don't reinvent the wheel. It's real easy to modify existing templates to meet any changes that your project requires. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.